Welcome back to DCS Debrief. Sorry for the long uh, delay bringing you uh, these new videos, but I'm back now. Uh, I'll start with a standard disclaimer. I'm not a fighter pilot. These presentations are not authoritative. They're information inferred from my own experience in real aviation where it's relevant. Directly referenced official but open source literature and anecdotal information from former fighter pilots who I happen to know. It's presented here for critique to add to the overall body of information on the topic of air combat in simulation games like DCS. And like many tactics, techniques and procedures, applications differ in key areas between the game and real life. And as such, these presentations are only relevant to the game. I hope you enjoy it. So far, this series has covered a lot of theoretical concepts and encouraged you to practice employing them. This video will be slightly different as I'm going to focus on steps that you can use to efficiently create a situation for training. This video will cover the setup of the gun sight tracking exercise and others will follow towards the end of this series. I'm not going to discuss the specifics of how to employ the gun, only how to generate a repeatable situation that provides you with the means to practice and improve learning from your own errors. It will be down to you to practice and make corrections to your own technique. To meet the training objectives of these serials, you'll need to apply all the theory that has been discussed so far in this series. So this video will not cover any new ground in technique. It will simply describe the flow, which is based on but does not replicate setups used by military training units. This exercise will enable you to practice entering the attack window, gaining a solution and holding the pipper on a manoeuvring target. It can be done either dry without pulling the trigger in simulate mode where avionics allow or live, which is obviously the best way to assess shot placement. The aim of this exercise is to enter the control zone of a non-cooperative target from an offensive position, simulating a missed rear quarter missile shot and to close to a gun solution. The training objectives for this serial are to correctly identify turn circle entry cues in order to enter the bandit turn circle, use lead lag and pure pursuit in order to maneuver into the bandit control zone, and use good pipper control in order to maintain a tracking gunshot solution. Two aircraft will set up in combat spread 6,000 feet above the nominated hard deck and approximately 1.5 nautical miles of beam at an airspeed about 10% above the top of the rate band to allow a small margin for an energy bleed on the initial break. For your distance, I find it useful to set up an airborne tack and yardstick. For more information on how to do that, head over to the Air Warfare Group YouTube channel, and if they haven't already, they'll have some videos on how to set up a yardstick soon. The general concept of the flow is that lead will place a wing into an offensive position with a check turn away, before reversing the turn to break into wing and defend, using the vertical as necessary down to the deck. It's important to remember that this is not BFM, so lead shouldn't reverse the turn direction after the first break but Wing should call any overshoots to identify them as BFM errors for later debrief. I find it useful to deploy chaff to mark any events in the TAC view file um, so that I can quickly reference them in the debrief. The flow is described with lead as the bandit and wing as the fighter, but it can be flown either way around for training. Once lead has got the pair into a position to commence the exercise, they will call one ready. Provided they're ready to commence, wing will call two ready. Lead will call check left or right 90 and commence a 2 to 3G turn away from wing at dry power using a pull to maintain airspeed. Upon reaching 90 degrees off the reference heading, lead will reverse into a brake turn and call fights on using as much nose down as they deem necessary but avoiding going straight for the vertical, typically around 135 degrees angle of bank. Wing will acknowledge the fights on call and should accelerate to the departure point, enter the turn circle and go for lead's control zone using lead, lag and pure pursuit to saddle behind. Wing will need to control pipper placement using smooth, progressive control inputs to avoid the pipper oscillating through the target. And remember that a gunshot will require lead, so Wing will need to move to lag after taking the shot to ensure good follow on BFM. Either lead or Wing can call knock it off once training objectives are complete or the fight reaches the deck. The gunshot tracking exercise is designed to consolidate all of the prior theoretical training in one exercise where the appropriate techniques will need to be selected, adjusted and moderated to achieve the desired solution and in which various techniques will need to be applied simultaneously. This exercise is not adversarial and lead should not overcomplicate Wing's task. If anything, this exercise depends on having a very competent lead who can maintain the difficulty of the follow at just the right level for good training benefit while maintaining an achievable solution. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. Go and practice your setups and your gun sight tracking and I'll see you back soon for another video on solving offensive BFM problems.